Welcome, boils, ghouls, and all you creatures from beyond, to another Halloween victories, where the scariest part is the people involved. W with the movies, not us. <laughs> I'm your host, Matt Presents, joined all as always by my smiley co-host. Hello, I'm sorry. You better be. <laughs> uh, but you can call me Mackle. After these movies, uh, we we are gonna have to like make apology videos. My my like uh, username that I've used uh, for like so much shit over the years, Mackle Shadackle, has essentially become a character, kind of making fun of people like your Logan Pauls, your Toby Turners, <laughs> your Shane Dawson's. Just uh, a really oh, terrible, yeah. terrible human being. <laughs> no, fuck that guy and what he did to Foothead Joe. Foothead I Joe. I will not forgive him for that Foothead Joe shit. Yeah, see, I'm Spiny Norman now, so I, I we, we're kind of like separate <laughs> entities. Well, uh, for Halloween this year, we've watched two dark, macabre movies. Uh, the thinning kind of isn't that spooky. It's not really very Halloween, but uh, close enough. Who cares? It's dark. It's two. It's two movies from the same director, both starring then famous YouTubers. It's uh, Shane Dawson and others in Smiley versus Logan Paul in The Thinning. Yep. And uh, I'll just. Get into Smiley if you're uh, if you don't got anything else. Um, I, I was gonna just say broadly about these two is I think we're kind of like the perfect two people to talk about these. And what I mean by that is we did grow. We were we were like probably we were old enough to not like Logan Paul by the time this came out. That we were like both adults when the thinning came out. Smiley, I'm sure I would have hated it back then too. I, I think I would have been excited for it, like and then hated it. Um, but it's like I, we. This is like almost like nostalgia from when we were like gra like in high school and whatnot. It, it's kind of weird. It's like I I think that it's easier for us to laugh about this than someone like if someone in their like late thirties or forties tried to watch these two. Like I think that there's some people who would ha like hate. I hated both of these, but I think there's people who would like hate them so much up to the point where they couldn't even get a good riff out of them. Where I feel like no, we we were we were raised in the right time period to find these funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. And I also have to um, say, we have... Uh, I, did, did you know that there was someone who appeared in both of these? Because I just found that out there? now. Michael Trainer, the guy who was well, like... The one of like kind of the weird Scarface guy in uh, The Thin and he was also in Smiley, I guess. Oh, yeah. So he's a double appearance. He's already on the list. There are the yeah, there are a few connections between these two movies. We'll get into it, but uh, let's start by introducing our first competitor, Smiley. Smiley is a film from 2012 about a girl who goes off to college and learns about this internet urban legend where if you go on the movie's version of chat roulette and type I did it for the lulls into the chat three times, a murderer known as Smiley comes out and kills the person on the other side. Uh, of course, the girl tries this because she doesn't believe it's real, but then it happens, and uh, now she believes that Smiley is after her. She keeps having nightmares and visions of being chased by Smiley, and uh, eventually this leads to the really stupid ending of the film that I don't know if we want to get into just yet. Right. But uh, it, it's it's... That's the that's the gist of it. There's this guy called Smiley. He's after this girl. That's the important stuff. He's killing people. When you type did it for the lulls three times. Uh, Michael, what'd you think of this film? It is amazing how lame this movie is. And it's kind of like... <laughs> it, it, it's... Because here's the thing. I think some people might watch this and think they were like intentionally trying to make a bad campy movie. But there's... I think that they thought they were fucking badasses making this. Like, oh, we're getting Shane Dawson and Toby Turner and this, these big YouTubers, and we're referencing memes like Pedo Bear. Like, I, I think, 
I do yeah, not think it, where there was a lot of irony in this at all. I think this was supposed to be cool, and it is like one of the most dated movies I've ever seen in my life. Oh my god, yes. No, it it feels like they're like, oh, look at us, we're referencing internet culture. And I think that's why so many YouTubers appear in it, because they're they're like trying to build up this legitimacy with of like oh we understand internet culture we've got shane dawson and tobuscus in our movie the difference between how someone would respond to that casting in 2012 versus now is like night and fucking day <laughs> no aged like milk doesn't begin to describe this film this is like one of the most poorly aged films i've ever seen and it's like 12 years old <laughs> yeah you ever buy uh milk at the store that was already spoiled <laughs> you know the, you, you could have bought a ga gallon of milk in 2012 and it, it would age better than this movie <laughs> like my god oh man yeah this is this is terrible this is fucking terrible it was great to riff on i mean like we we were in the <laughs> yes, call no. me me you and chris were in the call for both of these movies actually and the riff in on both of them was great i think I think with uh, the thin in it, it was mainly just uh, the people in it that we riffed on. Um, where with Smiley, the riff and material was like there was so much more of it, like just throughout. I think it got a little. I was I was bored by the last twenty minutes of it. Although that ending definitely brought it back up a bit. But yeah, like the uh, but, but for the most part, I had fun watching this because it was just fun to make fun of. Yeah, I don't know. Like there there are a few like kind of funny moments in this. But my god, so many of the characters are so fucking obnoxious. Yeah. But it the, the, it can be a little fun to just be like, alright, fuck you. Fuck all these terrible ass characters. Oh yeah. Like, there was more to tear into here. There was more to get mad about. Right. Sometimes the fun of watching a slasher movie is you are gonna see, like, the terrible people get slashed. You know, the, I think, like... Most of the terrible people in this make it out perfectly fine. Uh, y yeah, C completely no, I unharmed. Think that's, I mean, I mean, who really dies in this movie? It's like three unnamed characters we never get to know, and the main character. Yeah, and, and, what, and that's it. And I think like one of the people who supposedly died was fine. Like the girl who dies at the beginning of the, in the opening scene, isn't she like one of the members at the end? I don't know, maybe. I'd have to look that up again. It looked like her. Um, I I feel like we can't sidestep the ending of this movie any longer. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. So it uh, the reveal is that actually Smiley is the organization anonymous from the internet, uh, but all but also they're kind of like. Oh, uh, anonymous. If they don't like what we're doing, fuck them. They're off base. We're we're the real anonymous. We're the real troll army. We bullied exactly one girl into committing suicide because uh, we convinced her she was being chased by a homicidal maniac. Isn't anonymous mission uh, accomplished? I don't know much about anonymous, but isn't their whole thing just kind of anti-government? Like, isn't that kind of what they are? Uh, yeah, and the, yeah, there it was kind of like a, a, a libertarian movement, mm -hmm. right? This anti-government, anti-like big religion. They were they were the ones who exposed Scientology. So like, you got to give them that, right? But like, like I don't. It, it just seems like such a random thing to name drop. And 4chan, they name drop 4chan in this movie. Which that kind of checks out. Like, 4chan bullying someone into killing themselves. Yeah, okay, fair. I don't know, that almost feels like... Anti-internet for the movie that's trying to be like, Ooh, we love the internet so much. Also, also the final moment of the film implies that Smiley is real? Even though up to this point, every instance of the Smiley killings has been anonymous. Well, it's like they wanted to end on a double twist, but like the first twist <laughs> that you already settled on was... It was stupid, but I guess it explained everything that you wanted to explain. So why did you make Smiley... Or I don't know. It's like... Pick your fucking poison movie. Yeah. No, it's, uh... 
it's a ter- I don't know. I <laughs> it's a it's a, it's a really stupid ending. Obviously, I, they just decided everyone everyone should be a villain. I mean, even the girl that were falling in the movie. I don't really. I mean, she did kill someone, <laughs> so I don't really like her either. <laughs> like, yeah, there's no there's no one to really like in this. Honest to God, uh, Keith David plays a police officer that refuses to help anyone, and I still somehow found him to be the most likable person in this. <laughs> and I think it's just because I like Keith David. <laughs> he barely has any screen time. He's Keith David, and he's just kind of like, eh, whatever. Like I, I like to imagine him. Just Keith David is aware he's uh, he's this character is aware that he's in fucking smiling. He's just like, I'm not helping any of these fuckers. Fuck them. <laughs> Be- because yeah, his scenes were definitely the most entertaining. Just because I don't know, I think he's pretty. Yeah, he has a pretty funny delivery with just about anything. Like, I I normally enjoy Keith David when I see him. Which, honest to God, I Keith David's one of those people. Like, I the first time I ever like really recognized him was Community, and then I realized just how much fucking shit I've watched that he's in. And yeah, I became a fan of his after that. Yeah, no, he's he's a great actor, and he he is just like in everything. He you will take like all sorts of roles. So I, 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 when I looked up this film, I was like, what the fuck? He, Keith David is in this Shane Dawson movie? <laughs> oh, man. Shane Dawson, I mean, isn't actually... He he has, like, some screen... He's, like, the main character's love interest. But it's it's he's really not the main character. Right. Yeah, I mean, honest to God, his, his appearances are spaced out. So if, like... If you were a kid who wanted to watch this because you're, like, such a big fan of Shane Dawson and Toby Turner, you're not really getting a lot of them. Where, if you're a Logan Paul fan, you're getting your you're getting your shit with the thin, and I guess, because he's in a lot of that movie. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Shane Dawson is, like, one of the worst actors. And it's because he's not an actor. It's because he's in this because he's a YouTuber. Like, there's, there's YouTubers who get put into projects, and it's like, they're either... Like, I mean, I'm trying to think of some that have been good. I mean, there's YouTubers who make movies that I like, but the thing is, I almost feel like they go past the term YouTuber. Like, Joel Haver, I've shown you one of his movies for Movie Night and a lot of others. Like, a a YouTuber making a movie isn't inherently a bad thing, but it's normally the YouTubers where their initial focus was making movies, you know? Where if you get someone who is making viral videos or, like, vlogs and whatnot and put put them in a movie, it's probably not gonna pan out that well. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, like, Smiling Friends. There have been a lot of YouTubers on Smiling Friends who've done... Yeah. Great. And, yeah, and even if it's, like, someone who isn't, like, an especially great actor, per se, they their their performance on that show works because it's a crazy... The show has, like, a wild tone where it's like, yeah, you can throw Doug Walker into, into an episode and it'll work. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, imagine if Doug Walker was in this movie. It'd be so much better. Duh, I say what you want about him. I think he is a better actor than Shane Dawson. <laughs> you know, replace Shane Dawson with Doug Walker and replace uh, Babuskus with Linkara. Yeah, that'd be amazing. I'd like this. I'd like this movie. I would like that more. I would, I, even though it's fun to make fun of Toby Turner and uh, Shane Dawson, I would absolutely enjoy this more if they just had channel. If this was like the, this was the fine. This is finally we're getting the fifth anniversary movie. <laughs> Uh, I think Phalus did review this movie back in the day. That makes sense. I seem that, to recall a Phalus. I wouldn't be surprised if this film, with how, with how like much he fucking covers, and I wouldn't be surprised if fucking Nostalgia Critic did or will review this. Like, <laughs> this seems up his alley. Why not? Yeah, I think all those like old Channel Awesome reviewers could do a solid review of good old uh, <laughs> Smiley. Yeah. Do we want to? Do we want to talk about the cast? Yeah, I guess the only other thing I'll mention, and we kind of already said it, but just like the fucking internet references, man. It, like, I did it for the lols I, being their serious <laughs> phrase. Like, <laughs> Yes. Oh my god, don't, uh, don't think it, don't say it is better than that. It's, it's kind of funny to me that it's d- did it for the lols. It is funny to me, but I don't, I don't think they see the irony. <laughs> I think they thought this was. I no, think the people no. who made this thought it was a cool movie. No, yeah, I th- I think they they thought that was like a clever reference. 
I watched the because like I watched the angry video game nerd re- movie recently for like uh, for TV show movies for an episode of that. And the movie isn't very good, but I will say at the very least, it seems very self-aware. Like, there's shitty effects in it throughout. And it's so clear to me that every single one of them is intentional. It's trying to be, like, really old, shitty B-movies. Where with that one, I can say, like, okay, even if you say it's still... You could still say it's a bad movie, but there is irony there. It is, like, supposed to... It is presented this way on purpose. Smiley, I I genuinely don't... I don't think it has even a little bit... I don't think it even has, like, like, a... an inch of fucking self-awareness in it. No, not at all. The fucking pedo bear choke doesn't even make sense. They just call Shane Dawson pedo bear out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, it's it's a ref, it's a fucking reference. That doesn't even work. That doesn't even make sense. Yeah, we could talk about Casted. Caitlin Gerard. Who was she on the rem- social network? Really? I probably minor role in yeah. that. I don't. I couldn't say offhand who she played. Um, but in the social network, not known for a lot. I. It's one of those situations where I can't. Like I don't know her enough to really give her up too much of a hard time for this because I don't think the script gives you much to work with. But I mean, I, I've seen very corny acting. Like I can kind of compare a performance to. Like I kind of. I brought up that Dungeons and Dragons movie based off the. Uh, little comic saying it was evil essentially like she kind of reminds me of the girls in that it's just like very very like kind of very over the top trying to play into the innocence of this character like everybody's like laughing like haha that person got their neck slit (laughs) it's not real are you fucking stupid and then she's like oh no smiley is gonna come and get me like it's it's just like it's very corny but again like who who, yeah who's gonna deliver that script well She's also, like, the only decent person in this movie. Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, like, I, I know she, when she when I mean, they're trying okay, to do the I, smiley... I guess... When they're trying to do the smiley test, at the very least, I can say, like, she was just trying... She just wanted to prove to herself it wasn't real, so I guess you can say it's, like, there's no intentional murder there, but it's also, like, if you're concerned this is yeah. a thing, maybe don't test it. Yeah. I, I do think I suppose Shane Dawson's character was also a decent person Until before the, the twist. I still fucking hated him, just constantly going like, oh, "I'm such a nerd." Oh, me, oh, I'm Shane Dawson. Oh, I'm so, such a nerd. <laughs> I didn't fuck my cat. <laughs> this this era of Shane Dawson always looked like a guy who was way too old to be playing a high schooler playing a high schooler. Mm. Yeah, and to be fair, he is playing a college student in this, and he does look about college age. Yeah, but he's still got like the high school haircut, and he's dressed like a high schooler from the era. It, it definitely feels like he's there to appeal to younger people watching it. Yeah, which I I've honestly never understood that. Like <laughs> Shane Dawson, there's YouTubers look like. Fucking Logan Paul, you even called it out while we're watching. I get why younger people like him, even though I I don't think it's a good thing. But I understand. With Shane Dawson, I never I, I never got the appeal of him at all. <laughs> I, I never hated him either. Like, when the controversies yeah. about him came out, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like, uh, oh, I was calling it this whole time. Yeah, it no, was I, just like, I was just like, oh, shit, okay. I, I actually decided to look up, like, what the controversies were with him. Because I just kind of, like, people were like, oh, fuck uh, Shane Dawson. I'm like, sure, whatever, I don't care. But I, I looked up what he actually did, and it was mostly just, like, old videos mm-hmm. that, like, hadn't aged well. And I'm like, okay, well, that was bad, but also, like... I'm not really prepared to judge someone's current character sure. by what they were doing on the internet in 2012. Right, you know, right. It was a different time. Yeah, I I, 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 my biggest thing with him is I just always thought he was incredibly unfunny and uninteresting. Sure. And I did, and when I was a kid, I liked Tobuska, so that does say a lot. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, Tobuska is like, nah, fuck that dude. Piece yeah. of shit, fuck him. Shane Dawson's character's name is Bender. Yeah. <laughs> Why is his name Bender? There's also uh, her, her no roommate, idea. Proxy. Proxy. Ha ha. It's an internet word. Her name is the internet word. Yeah. I'm trying to recall what I've seen her in because she looks familiar to me. Um, Melanie uh, Papal- 
how do you say that last name? Puplia. Puplia, that sounds right. She was in Hell or High Water. Haven't seen that. She looks so familiar to me. I just don't... Is she, is she a YouTuber? Nah, I don't think she's a YouTuber. There's a few other YouTubers in here I've recognized ever since looking there at the are. cast. Shit, I don't know. Well, okay, wait, you know what? Um, no, never mind. She was in something called Endgame, and that's one of the Howard Hamlin movies, but it was a TV show called Endgame, so it's not that. I don't fucking know what I've seen her in, but I swear to God, she just looks so familiar to me. Hmm. But I guess, uh, I guess not. She might just... I don't know, she might just have one of those faces. She looks like people I knew in college. Mm-hmm. Andrew James Allen as Zane, who's, like, not an actor who's been in much, and his character was, like, the most annoying. Like, he, he num- number one annoying character in this film. He was, like, the kind of, like, the main bully character, right? Yeah, but he, he's also, like, the super hacker. Oh, well, okay, he's the one who toned it. Well, was he revealed to be one of them, too, at the end? Like, that his death was a fake-out? Yes. Okay. I'm already forgetting yeah. details of the movie because it's so they're, it's so fucking weird. Um, the girl who got murdered at the beginning, I think it's her who got murdered at the beginning, and I also think was revealed to be part of Anonymous. Nikki Limo is a, she's a YouTuber. Not a YouTuber I've ever watched, but I recognize her. She's been in videos with like Jax Films and other people. Jax Films is like the only OG YouTuber that I still watch and like. A, a lot of these actors actually were in, um... Like one one of his like some big Jack's film video. Hold on, your grammar sucks a hundred. Uh, your yeah, your grammar sucks a hundred. Toby was in that, and that was like one of the like Toby and Jack used to collaborate all the time, and Jack did cut cut ties with him pretty much right after the controversy. But uh, but yeah, to, um, but Toby was in your grammar sucks one hundred. So was Shane Dawson. I remember that video. I was really hyped for that video. And then I wasn't, and then I was kind of underwhelmed by it. It was kind of like, uh, he was hyping it up as this big hour long episode of why your grammar sucks. But like so much of it was filled in with like, like unscripted improv stuff. And it was just like, oh, you, you, you kind of found ways to stretch it out. I thought it was going to be like an hour of like actual skits and whatnot, but it wasn't that. But I do like, but I do like Jack. Jack's cool. Roger Bart as the professor who just, yeah, <laughs> who I, I kind, kind of thought of he was ridiculous. Gonna... Like, his speeches make no fucking sense. I thought that the whole idea is he was going to be involved in this somehow based on the way he acts and talks, but no. No, he's just like that. The same thing with Keith David's yeah. character. He's so dismissive that you think, oh, he's going to be part of Anonymous too, but, like, nope. He's just like that. <laughs> yeah, no, the professor, like, his speeches would just, like, go off the rails, and it's like, what are you even talking about, dude? Uh, he was just He was just on shrooms. He was teaching, like, he was not qualified to be a professor. He probably didn't even actually work there. (laughs) Professor Professorson. (laughs) Yeah. Jana Gallagher, who I am assuming is director Michael Gallagher's either wife or daughter. I think wife. They seem about the same age. Could be a sister. But she is in... Could be. She is in both of these movies. Oh, she's both because, Smiley and the thinning. So many people are going to get like double double featured in this episode, but they probably won't show up again. Uh, Steve Green was one of the guys who typed in. I did it. He was the first person to see. I did it for the lols, and he's a YouTuber. I think he's in a relationship with that other one I mentioned. Oh yeah, he's in a relationship with the person he got killed in the opening. All right. All right. So that's a little. That's a fun little nod. That's a fun little Easter egg. He also, he, he he was an actor in Smiley. He wrote The Thinning. He was one of the writers on The Thinning, along with Michael Gallagher. So that's this a weird instance of one of our actors writing the other movie we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of sounds like he has his contacts and they keep working together. Yeah, because, like, Michael Gallagher, he's done Smiley, he's done The Thinning, he did this, like movie called internet famous that also had a bunch of youtubers in it including shane dawson and like otherwise he hasn't really done that much yeah i swear we gotta have like some sort of restraint with covering like these youtuber movies because if we if we don't like so many of these guys are gonna overthrow like our our kings you know because they're just gonna keep showing up in them they made it there was just a short period of time where these guys 
kept making movies. Logan Paul's got a handful of them. Shane's got a handful of them. Logan Paul does have a couple more movies. Well, Shane Dawson also has a few more movies. Yeah, like they could absolutely appear more. There was also his movie that he directed, Not Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one, that one I've avoided like the plague. Hall of Victories is what would get me to do it. But I, I, the only other thing I would pair it up with is that internet famous movie. Oh, so, Logan Paul did a really, like, they tried to do, like, an airplane movie. Yes. So we could pair that up with, like, a bad, another bad spoof movie. We could pair it up with Airplane 2, the sequel. People hate that one. Although I'm sure it has more defenders than Airplane Mode. Yeah. Like, Airplane Mode would have to be paired with, like, bottom of the barrel, I'm sure. It, like, it was not talked about fondly by anyone. Was that ever, like, a YouTuber movie that you liked when you were younger? Because I can remember one that I liked that I'm sure I would think is shit now. But I did like it when I was younger. But I was also, like, uh, 14 when I saw it. The Channel Awesome movies are really the only ones I, I remember seeing. I enjoyed those when I was younger. Now Nowadays, it's kind of like... I still think kick yeah, has charm to it. Suburban Nights and To Boldly Flee are t- way too fucking long. Yes. But I, there was a movie that Niga Higa made. Who I, I, I kind of... I've, I mean, unless unless there's something I don't know, I kind of got respect for that guy. He made videos that I found amusing when I was young. And then he kind of yeah, stopped. I, like, he retired. He stopped doing it. Like, and I was just like, you know what? Maybe that's for the best because you were... You, what you made was appealing for that time. And if you feel like you don't have it in you anymore, you... You left the internet on good terms. That's hard to do, apparently. <laughs> it's it's weird that people don't talk about him more nowadays. He was like number I feel one. Like he was he was like the defining voice of early early YouTube. He is the person who got me on YouTube. He was like the first person I think to overthrow Fred in subscribers. Yeah, like he. Uh, I think. Well, I think. Smosh Fred and Nigahiga were kind of like in a battle for first place for a long time. Those were like the three big ones. Uh, Smosh, obviously, like yeah. when I was young, their movie is unwatchable. It, either TV show movies or Hollow Victories is how that one's coming back up. Smosh, for me. Smosh the movie definitely has Hollow Victories potential. Yeah, like I, fe- I feel like that could be paired to Fred. Although I think Fred would like kick the shit out of it as the thing, which is yeah, weird. But weirdly enough, there's been there's so many defenders of the Fred movie. That's really interesting to me. Um, I thought it was terrible when I saw it, but I mean, when I, when compared to stuff like this, it's, yeah, Fred's better than Smiley, I'll say that much, uh, and at least knew what it was. The movie that Nika Higa made, and it was just a, sh- you know, it was just a short film uploaded to YouTube, was called Agents of Secret Stuff, which the joke is ass, but I, 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 I thought that was, when I was like 14, I thought that shit was hilarious, I watched that, I showed it to friends, uh, I'm sure if I watched it now I would hate it, I would not like it. But Nika Higa, like like I said, he was he was appealing to a younger audience, and he did a good job with it. I I thought you were referring to uh, Ryan and Sean's not so excellent adventure. I haven't actual, seen that like, feature length movie they made. I never saw it either. But that that to that's like the first YouTuber movie I remember existing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel so. like Fred the movie was the first one. I I guess technically Stupid Mario Brothers the movie would be the one, but that one that one was uploaded with so many fucking month gaps it never felt like a movie to me. <laughs> uh like there were so many fucking delays when Richie was trying to release that thing. But I like it. Yeah. I, I I I I actually enjoy I like when I was a kid it was like the best shit ever. Even now, I still like it for the most part. But yeah, Agents of Secret stuff. At the very, you know, give I, you know, I don't think I would like it that much if I revisit it. But one, I don't know that I haven't revisited. It. Maybe I would find it charming still. And two, it wasn't. It wasn't even an hour long. Like it, it felt like. I think one of the biggest problem with these YouTube movies is they just don't have enough like material to justify a feature length. Yeah. So like, if they if you keep it sweet and uh, short and sweet, that might be that might be key. That might be the way to go. Um, we didn't actually talk about Melanie Papalia's character. We just kind of said that she looked like, I was just trying to remember who she reminded me of or who she looked like, but, uh, she, she was a pretty obnoxious character. She was pretty unbearable. Yeah. She's the, the kind of mean roommate. Yeah. And I I was kind of like, I wasn't sure if she was going to be a bad guy or not by the end of it, just because it was like, it wasn't surprising that she was, but it was also like, maybe she's just like, just really doesn't want to deal with this shit. But it wasn't yeah. like it was a good, re- it wasn't like I watched, it was like, oh, that was actually a good reveal that caught me off guard. It was like, no, that was always an option. It was just like, I wasn't sure if they were going in that. Honestly, I thought the professor or the police officer were going to be evil before she was. That might be everybody. There was a therapist character. 
by by Liza Whale. Whale? Well? I mean, she's has she has a big hist like a big television history. She was I guess in something called Gilmore Girls. I know my sisters watch that. How to Get Away from Murder. These are like these are big shows. So she has some pretty noteworthy stuff, I suppose. I do want to mention like how good the smiley design is. Like it's kind kind of just like the full flesh face. With like yeah. the stitched on eyes and smile, it's 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 a, like a good creepy design. It's a pretty good design. I'll give you that. I remembered it all these years later when you mentioned Smiley. I immediately had that image in my face. I will say the movie maybe has one good shot of it, and that's at the very end where you actually get to look at it because they kind of keep it hidden most of the movie. But it's like you didn't have to keep it hidden. It looked all. I mean, yeah, it looked all right. There, there, there may have been a couple of shots more than one, but they they don't. They didn't really want you to see Smiley that much in this. It's like they were trying to hide it. Yeah. And, and I understand with a lot of slasher movies or horror movies, it is kind of a whole less is more situation, but show show it more than Smiley showed it, though. Uh, yeah. I I mean, I, I think part of it is just, like, they gotta hold on to that twist, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have anything else to say about Smiley, do you? No. Stupid, but fun to riff on. It's, uh, it, it gets props for that. Because I, I prefer that over something that I'm just bored out of my mind watching. Which I thought would be the case with The Thin but honestly, no, I, w- I really wasn't that bored by The Thin I feel like I could have been if I watched it alone, though, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, why don't you introduce The thinning? I will. I, I, I guess I'll say on top of that, I probably would have been bored of Smiley if I watched it. It's a riff. It's a riff movie. You need you need friends to watch it with. But it it, it's, it works for that. The thin end is a movie that was released in 2016, directed by, you know, same director as Smiley, Michael... Gallagher. It's kind of like this future dystopian world where they're trying to take care of like overpopulation. And the way that they do that is by having kids like throughout many years of their life starting kind of like, I'd say like kindergarten or first grade level up until, you know, like senior in high school, you're taking these tests to and if you pass them, you get to go on. If you're a stupid fucking moron, you get killed. And we have, um, you know, we have the main character who's really smart and selling, uh, and selling like kind of ways of cheating to people, uh, to try to help her mom with treatment, which is kind of a part of the story they just mentioned once. We don't even ever actually see the mother. It's kind of a, I feel like it's kind of just there to gain sympathy for the character. They don't really do much with that. And then there's also Logan Paul's character who is definitely getting through these tests because his father is like a, is the governor of Texas and, he keeps letting him off the hook until he can't get away with it anymore. And uh, and Logan Paul's girlfriend dies and because they do a whole year. They skip a whole year. The opening scene is the second to last test they have to take. And then most of the movie is focused on the final test they have to take. But his girlfriend dies at the beginning of the movie the year before. Um, or at least uh, there's a big this movie has a stupid twist too. we'll get to that. But at least gets taken away. So throughout the movie, he's like he wants to intentionally fail the test. So because he's, he's it's basically just a suicide mission. And but he somehow passes. But then the girl who's really smart, uh, Lena, who he can't seem to get the name quite right, but she but she somehow failed the test. So clearly there's some sketchy shit going on. And then most of the movie from there on out is just them trying to uncover what the hell is going on and, you know, get her out of it. She has a best friend who's also a they, this movie's got some fucking epic hackers, both of them, who's, uh, you know, leaking footage of what's going on on the inside of the news, which I don't, I don't even know how you make a controversial video um, in a situation like this, like the news is saying they're beating up a look this this officer is beating up a student it's like you know they're like murdering children too right <laughs> Are, like uh, why is this the outrageous thing <laughs> we're sending to the news <laughs> but i guess it's like one's been normalized one hasn't i get it but it's just it's it's impossible not to make fun of that because it's so outrageous it's so stupid and uh yeah matt what'd you think of the thinning here's the thing i fucking hate trump <laughs> the thinning is like it's it's weirdly dark yeah but it keeps like getting in its own way like the premise is so dark and it it, it acknowledges how dark the premise is but it also keeps undercutting itself starting with casting logan paul in the lead <laughs> We'll put a pin in that. I got a lot to say about that. But, like, I don't know. Just, like, constantly, it it never feels like... Like, the devastation of this world ever really sets in. 
Yeah, it's you know, a movie full of YouTubers and Disney Channel stars. Like, it's weird. I think we, we both kind of talk, said this while we were watching it. I think there is a chance I could have liked this when I was younger. By the time it came out, I was an adult. No, I wasn't going to like this, but... But I, mean, I think I I think I wouldn't have because it's like this cheap YouTube Red exclusive starring a YouTuber that really shouldn't be in the lead of this movie. But you know, if if they like changed actors around and showed this to me as a kid, I might have been like, "Ooh, it's deep. Ooh, and it's so edgy. Ooh." Yeah, fourteen-year-old me would have had no concept of Logan Paul and what he's done. So, and, all, and also some of his worst controversies came out after this movie. So, I think I would have been okay with it. But I, I hear you. Yeah, I, I think it's a very it, it it feels very high school level film, honestly. And I don't I don't know that it does a particularly good job at that. It's it, there's, there's nothing wrong with making a high school level film. I just don't think he does a very good job, you know? Right. It's competently made. It is competently made. And what's weird is it's not nearly as deep as it thinks it is. But that's not to say it isn't deep. That it's not to say that it has nothing to say. Because it does have stuff to say. It's j- j- just not nearly as much as it is pretending to. Because a lot of it, a lot of it is like the the Logan Paul action movie breaking out of the school side of it. Mm-hmm. And not the... The, the test and because, part. Yeah. No, like the thing I think this sort of is fairly close to conceptually... Probably the thing it was writing the coattails of when it came out is The Purge, right? Mm -hmm. But The Purge, that's a setup that's kind of lends itself to interesting situations. Because who lives and who dies is, you know, kind of up in the air. There's a lot of action that goes into that. Where in this movie, they're taking a test. Yeah. And there's just like a bunch of intense shots of kids taking a test twice and it's like and 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 it doesn't even last that long because like there's only so long you can hold on that and that's that's like 90% of the tension in this movie is them taking a test and, and i think there even is a way to frame that in an interesting way though if i'm being honest like if you show people like really trying to solve these problems like you know some of the more advanced math questions they're solving which they they do it on a fucking tablet with multiple choice that doesn't really make a lot of sense that's normally something that you're going to write out um but if they actually should, like have them writing it down and showing them do the process like maybe someone who actually knows that math could like look at it and say oh they just made a fucking mistake but then it like if it's like okay but, like for your more stupid audience members like me they also have the kids taking the test so you could show them answering something incorrectly like and it's like and that is a you know chris brought it up when we were watching it's a sad scene when the one little boy is asking for help and the teacher can't help him uh there is something kind of uncanny about that there was actually one Part of the movie that I genuinely liked, and it's when they're showing these kids this animation, it almost reminded me of Fallout. Not as clever as Fallout, <laughs> where it's like no. trying to paint this as like a happy thing, as a good thing, you know? And it's like this goofy cartoon yeah. that they're showing to kids. And it's like, that's, yeah, that worked. That that part of the movie, for what they're trying to communicate, where they're trying to normalize this, and like it almost explains the underreaction some of these people are having. Like, yeah, it, like it's... It, it, it's a, it's an interesting way to go about it, but it, it's there's not enough of that in the movie. I'd say there's actually very little of that in the movie. Yeah, no, that it's it's like a very dark moment, honestly. Like th- that they're that they're trying to introduce this concept to children and like normalize it to children. Yeah, and. And it just, and it's like, okay, but this is the Logan Paul movie. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, I, yeah. That's the weird thing, right? Because, like, Smiley, it feels like they were trying to tap so much into, like, internet culture with that. And that's why it has YouTubers in it. But it was this big theatrical release where this was a Logan Paul movie that was a YouTube Red exclusive if you want to watch it today, it is on the Logan Paul channel. Yeah. And so it's it feels like it's a Logan Paul movie, but it's not, or it shouldn't be at least. <laughs> 
Because right. it's, it's got so much more going on than that. It doesn't really lean into what people like about Logan Paul's videos. I think Logan Paul's audience wouldn't get this movie. I think they would like be kind of bored and upset by this movie. They'd probably want to watch Airplane Mode. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like more in line with his actual stuff. <laughs> See, I could give like, you know, like there's movies where we talk about this where on the show where it's like, oh, not one. There's not like a single nice thing I have to say about. There's not a single like ounce of quality where this one. No, there's a couple of things going for it. But as a full package, absolutely not. And I don't I mean, I don't think there's like really any good actors in this. I don't think that. But it's also like I don't think any of them are god awful. I think Logan Paul is definitely the weakest link, but even then, if all he, it's like a teen drama where he just has to act like really serious and yell and cry, it's like I mean he's doing that. Yeah, I, I don't even think he's like terrible in his role. It's just weird that they cast him. The mistake was casting Logan Paul, not necessarily anything he does in the film. Right. I mean, I get. I guess pretty clearly the the message here is about standardized tests but i also feel like it's not particularly deep commentary on standardized testing like i i get that like ooh if you do bad in school that's going to hurt you in the long run that's it's good. like you know th this is just a more extreme version of like you fail in school you're not going to like be able to to provide for yourself but I don't think they really explore that idea at all. No. It's just sort of presented like, hey, it's almost like if you fail a, a standardized test, you die. It's like the government is killing you. Right. I, I also think, like, honestly, when you point that out, I feel like that's the case of, like, even, like, smaller aspects of the movie. Like, the relationship between the two leads that they build. Uh, that's rushed through like crazy. Um, in fact, you could even argue it's like not there until they kiss. Like, I guess they had yeah. a little bit of time together. Like the scene where they're drying off after the pool, I guess there's supposed to be some implication there, but it's not like, it's nothing, it's nothing all that strong, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, they imply from the beginning that like the girl has a crush on Logan Paul, but we never get a good idea of why she has a crush on Logan Paul. I guess just that it's Logan Paul. Yeah. He's a, he's, he's a buff guy. I don't know. Yeah. He is, he is. He It's an attractive man. She likes him because he's an attractive man. Right. Do we want to talk about casting or do you have more to say about it before we get to that? Because I got a decent bit to say about some of these guys. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, no, I, I think we can move on. I just, I just, my point was their, their message here. It's, it's not really that deep they don't really dig into it they just yeah. sort of present this very surface level metaphor and it's like okay we get the metaphor anything else to say i guess i guess you get a little of that with the ending maybe we want to talk about cast before the ending because i don't think i don't think the ending affects the movie quite as much as it does as in smiley I think the ending is just kind of lame because it kills the tension, but we could talk about casting first. Like, if you, like, I, I knew what the twist of the movie was because I saw Quentin Review's video all those years ago. You even, you referenced his review of the second movie. Um, <clears throat> I remember when that was a fucking ordeal. Uh, the, <laughs> you, we the, should talk about the second movie a bit. Yeah, I, I don't know, like, knowing the ending, kind of, like, watching this movie for the first time was like, okay, well, I, I know they're not actually dying, so... Yeah, the tension's gone. So, I, and and that, and that's the issue. If you want to, if you want to make a good movie, you're going to make a movie that people want to rewatch. So, if you have a twist, the idea of having a twist is kind of to, you know, make people rewatch the movie and reevaluate it. Like a good twist can make a movie a lot of fun to rewatch, um, and pick up on how much the movie was actually hinting at that without you even realizing it. But with uh, the thin end, it kind of feels like the point of that is to set up the sequel, which was basically already made, then delayed for, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it's not that I completely dislike the ending, because it is kind of, it, it's an interesting twist to reveal that, like, 
hey, they didn't actually die, they go into slave labor. That almost does expand the the metaphor at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. At least a little. It's like, well, they don't actually die, they just do slave labor. They don't have a life worth living anymore. Yeah. And also it sets up the sequel, which... Yes, uh, then Logan Paul uh, filmed a dead body, and uh, that got delayed by two years. And quite hilariously, it was very much about the 2016 election, and it, it just felt like completely out of date by its release in 2018. YouTube should have just put it up right away. They should have. Like, I, I, I get it. it was like the, the heat was there, but it's not like Logan Paul didn't do something shitty in 2018. Like... He's always doing shitty things. Yeah, and also, I, I think that one also kind of ends on a cliffhanger. Like, they haven't completely ended the thinning in that one yet. But then there was never a third. Like, there was a planned third movie, but it never happened because Logan Paul got in trouble. Do you think it's possible that just some of the cast didn't want to come back because they'd have to work with Logan Paul? <laughs> Perhaps. I, that's an assumption. I but like it's like yeah. I don't know. Like he he was like a really hated person for that. But but he because I don't know. Just because he kind of has this uh like extreme douchebag energy on YouTube and always has. I feel like he's just someone who's been able to get away with it to the extent. It's like I, I feel like Logan Paul has to go to prison to actually get canceled at this point. <laughs> I mean, I don't think he's done. Like, I, the the worst he's done is that filming a dead body thing, and that's, uh, that, that we know about. That we know about. The worst thing he's done is that filming a dead body scene, which is bad, but uh, not, like, the most cancelable thing. Just a bad decision. Just kind of him being stupid. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah, I mean, the video got taken down. I, whatever. Who cares? He's still, a, like an obnoxious person. Uh, his, his more recent his more recent thing is Prime and the market in it to kids, even though it's something that kids absolutely should not be drinking. It's really like I mean it's like look, people have been selling us unhealthy sure, yeah, shit I mean, our entire life, but that it, that one was like exceptionally bad. Yeah, no, I mean it's not like that is the only bad thing he has ever done. Yeah. It's just probably the worst thing he's done. And that's not the worst thing a YouTuber has ever done. No, I I agree with that. I mean, I think, I think we hear horrible shit every single year. <laughs> at the, at this year, it's, I, it's I, multiple people a year. Yeah, uh, I certainly have like a bit more respect for Logan Paul than I do Tobuscus. Sure. Yeah, Gaston. Yeah. Apart from Logan Paul, we've also got Peyton List, former Disney Channel star. She was in Hubie Halloween, so this is her second appearance. She she was in Hubie Halloween, so this is a return for her. Adam Sandler did a lot with Disney Channel actors. Like, they appeared in, like, Grown Ups. Uh, they, like, more yeah. than one of them appeared in Hubie Halloween. Like, I mean, some of them were even on, like, the same show that appeared in Hubie Halloween. My little sister used to watch a show called Jesse, and her and that Indian kid in uh, Hubie Halloween were both on that. Um, I remember that show. I, 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 I never really... It's not one, like... Like Wizards of Waverly Place, like my it was also a show I became aware of because my sisters watch it. Also, it was Disney Channel. It's huge, but but I saw like a decent amount of those. I can't say I've ever seen a whole episode of Jesse. I always thought it was funny because there's a cast member named Kevin Chamberlain, which is the same name as a buddy of mine. So I would just like I would just send that to him. <laughs> She's fine. I don't know. I don't really have an issue with the performance, but it's just kind of a movie where like. Most of the characters don't have a lot of personality. They're just very straight-faced and serious, and it kind of yeah. makes sense in a story like this, but... She's certainly better than Logan Paul, but yeah, it's not like she has a lot to do in the film. She's in Cobra Kai, which I is a show people keep recommending to me and people say is really great. So uh, perhaps uh, she's really good in that. I've got no opinion on her other than that. But yeah, I mean, not, nothing great, nothing bad. That's that's kind of what I would call her performance in this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it. That's the weird thing is like this is such like a dark political script, but then it's it's filled with YouTube stars and and like Disney Channel stars, and it feels more like a Disney Channel movie, even though the writing is nothing like a Disney Channel movie. Mm hmm. Because <laughs> you, you you've also got um. 
Callum Worthy, another Disney Channel star. I think he was the best in this movie, honestly. I think he was the best actor just because they gave him, like, a little bit of personality. He was a smartass, you know? Yeah, he also barely gets anything to do. Yeah, he's like the hacker, so he just has to sit on his phone the whole time, but... I, I, yeah, like him being a smart ass to his friend. I was like, okay, I can, I can, I can get with this guy. This guy's fine. I, it, it was my favorite performance of the movie. I was like, in a better movie, I think I would accept this character in a better movie, you know? Yeah. I think a better movie would have used him for more. <laughs> yeah. I think he, I think he would have had like funnier lines in a better movie, right? Because yeah. he is kind of the comedy relief sometimes, but n- barely. It's it's like more towards the beginning of the movie. Yeah. You said he was on a show called Zeke and Luther. I don't know if he, he it's not showing up on his list. He was actually on a show called Austin and Allie. I don't know if he was on Zeke and Luther too, but it's not showing up on his list, which I feel like that'd be, that's a star and role. I feel like it'd be at the top. But Austin and Allie, I think is what I recognize him from because I did, that's another show my sisters would watch. Not as often. Eh? I don't think they were, I don't think they were into Austin and Allie as much <laughs> as Jesse. The, uh, I mean, have we said enough about Logan Paul? Yes, we've said enough about Logan Paul, I think, unless you've got something else to say. No. Um, Leah Mari Johnson, um, I, I recognize her from the Fine Bros videos. I don't know if she ever had a YouTube channel of her own, but um, she was on Kids React, and a lot of those kids have grown up to say <laughs> the Fine Bros basically like tried to push them to say things. Like they weren't, it, they, a lot of them are saying the reactions weren't very sincere. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe that's just the like kids growing up and saying, "Oh, we can get some uh, attention if we say this." But I, I, I would not put that past the fine bros. <laughs> well, it's shit talking YouTubers today. I'm sorry. I mean, we first off, we are talking about two YouTube uh, movies with YouTubers who are themselves quite controversial. Yeah, she was. I, I don't like. She was in the movie so little. It's kind of funny that she gets like third billing on this. Although it's just Google. So it's probably gone with the most popular people, and like, fair enough, she was on a popular channel. But uh, I don't. She's she's kind of out of the movie really quickly, so I don't have much of an opinion on her performance other than her and everyone else has an underreaction to being killed. A lot of re return appearances from there too. Like se- several people have made their second appearance just for working with the same director, I guess. Yeah, like. Everyone in this movie, I feel like, kind of isn't reacting to the thinning the way they should. And maybe some of that is commentary, but also I, I feel like they really undersell this. Like, there's a party in the rec room, and I'm like, I'm sorry, who wants to go to a party when their friends just got shot? Right. I, I think that, like... The underreaction can work in some places. Like again, them trying to normalize it to kid, like to kids when they're really young. I think like people just being like nervous for the test is the good best way to explain that. But once they fail, they, I don't know that like you're you're being taken away to assumably be shot or something. That's yeah, no no one's really given that the reaction it warrants. Uh, and maybe that's a fear. And like sometimes I feel like the reason that happens in these movies is it's a fear of the performance being bad. <laughs> Cause like the an over like a really strong reaction being delivered by a bad actor is like painful to sit through, and from a good actor it's still uncomfortable. Like because it's supposed to be uncomfortable, but I feel like sometimes when I see underreactions like that, it's just like they maybe tried it with a more extreme reaction, and that take was unusable, so they just told them to tone it down. <laughs> Perhaps that's a theory. A film theory. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah, if we ever do FNAF, that's going to bring YouTubers into it as well. Um, FNAF kind of... It got, like, mostly positive reviews, at least from FNAF fans. I, I was okay with the movie. I don't think it's bad, but it's... I I did not hate it. I don't think it's bad enough to be on Hollow Victories. Sure. Um, Maybe the sequel. We'll see. <laughs> uh, Matthew Glaive as the governor... Uh, it just kind of reminds me of, like, a Lifetime movie actor. Yeah. I did... It was kind of funny that it was, uh, Texas to me. <laughs> yeah. Like, that feels... I mean, it, it almost feels kind of blunt. It kind of feels on the nose to set it in Texas. But I don't know. Accurate. Sure. 
I, I feel like there is almost kind of an interest in a dilemma with him in the movie. I just, again, it's another thing that isn't like focused on that well. And I don't like the character. I don't like the performance. Like I, obviously you're not supposed to like him, but it's like, I don't yeah. like him as an antagonist either. I thought it was interesting at the end where he just like threw the guy from the school under the bus. Like he'd been calling the shots the whole time, and then when like he got caught for it, he just threw the under, the other guy under the bus and was like, "Oh, if this is what's actually happening, we're gonna get him." Uh, my my son is not above the law. Yeah, I do wonder if he's aware that the kids don't actually die because he seemed like pretty upset by the end of it that he had to let uh good old Logan go, but uh. I, I I don't know. I I feel like that's something that'd be explained in the sequel. Yeah, it also feels like that wouldn't really be helping our overpopulation problem that much. Although overpopulation is also not really the problem people make it out to be. Like we have the resources to support human life. It's it's all a matter of greed. It's all a matter of like. You know, certain people hoarding resources, you know. And that's something that you can explain it with. Yeah, like, I mean, um, say what you want about the Hunger Games movies. It's not necessarily about overpopulation, but, I mean, they, that is a big part of it. Like, I remember there's a scene in one of those movies where, like, there's characters literally, like, making themselves vomit at a party so they can continue to consume shit. Like... It, it, like you could have something like that in the movie, just showing like yet yeah, like showing the the definite solution to this problem. They, I mean, they even go into that a little bit with the animation they showed to the kids, where it's like some countries have gotten by by just limiting how many kids people can have. And you even brought up in like a realistic situation, the first people to go would probably be like the homeless and people in prison. Yeah, but it's also not a very realistic situation to begin with. Yeah, I get that. But I agree with you on that. I think that's true. Did we actually say what the plot twist was? I know we talked about it for a long time. I, I think, yeah, because we kept saying, oh, we'll save it for the end, but then we talked about it so much that it's almost pointless. Yeah, say what the plot twist is. The, 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 the twist is that the kids don't actually die. They go to, like, a, a factory where they make iPads for the others and do We did kind of say that. We did actually. We did actually kind of say that. We just didn't say it smoothly. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't we didn't come out and explain what the ending was. We were just kind of talking about it like people already knew. And a lot of people did because a lot of people who watched it or talk about it are people who like they are people who watch the Quinn reviews video or people who saw some other person review it. Like it This one I think got more reviews than Smiley cuz I think Smiley was a little early to the game on that. Yeah. On like doing YouTube stuff, but by the time the thinning came out like Logan Paul, I mean, just, just reviewing the Logan Paul movie was, was like a, a big gimmick, you know? Yeah, I'm sure there's more people who've watched reviews than actually watched the movie. Um, because those were YouTube videos. Another thing that this movie missed the mark on with, like, casting Logan Paul is assuming Logan Paul's audience has that big of an attention span. It is a short movie. And to be fair, there was a point where I'm like... How are they even going to drag this out? Because like I said earlier, all the tension is them taking a test that doesn't last very long. So, yeah, like I said, a lot of it is just this Logan Paul action movie breakout. But it is pretty short because I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't know how you could make this film any longer. It's like an hour and 15 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, that is all the material you had for this movie. Yeah. Um, Michael Trainer who I don't actually remember who he played in the in Smiley. I didn't recognize him in this one. He's a lot he, more recognizable because they give him, like, all the scars. He played Smiley in Smiley. He was the... Did he? Yeah. Okay. He, he, he was just, like, the monster. Okay. He was the guy under the monster mask. Oh, there you go. He's a returning... He's now a... He's now a returning Hall of Victories <laughs> actor. Yeah, he was, uh, he was in both these films. Stacey Dash is in this movie... I did not realize Stacy Dash was in this movie. I guess she's the reporter. I guess no, she's the teacher. Uh, who? No, she's the teacher. You're you correct? Okay. You got yeah. Me. Thank she's, you. She's she's the one who's like Lena Smart. She you d don't kill that kid. Kill those kids. Laura Heron. Who who is she? Was she the reporter? I don't think Perhaps. so. Perhaps. Who was she? I can't remember. Maybe she was the reporter. I don't know. She doesn't look like her in this picture, but it's also, it could just be, like, 
different hair color, sh- longer hair in this picture. Because she had like short blonde hair in the movie. No, that's Amy. It, Wendy Banks. That was it. So that's Amy Pafraf. P- Paf- Paf- I don't know. I'm so fucking bad at reading last name. I am. Th- th- that could be like a whole fucking compilation is M- Michael trying to read the names of the actors. <laughs> God. Amy Pafrath. She was in the Purge Anarchy and she was in a bunch of evil long <laughs> movies. It's really funny because the second. Uh, the second you started saying that, I like clicked on her filmography. And I just saw Evil Bong Five, Evil Bong Four Twenty, Evil Bong Three, Evil Bong. It's just like, oh, that's what Matt's about to talk about. <laughs> Ginger Dead, uh, Ginger Dead Man. Verse oh versus Evil Bong. Yeah, Ginger Dead Man versus Evil Bong. Yeah, she seems perfect for her, the thin and then. Kind of weird that she got in there with like all the Disney Channel stars and and YouTubers. Yeah. Just like these, uh, how do you like, th- I, I remember watching some of your Evil Bong reviews, but it's been a while. What's your general opinion of that series? I mean, you have merchandise from that. I, I When I visited you in Texas, I, I saw the Evil Bong, like, on your shelf. I like the first one well enough, and I think it's kind of conceptually funny as a franchise, but, like, they got really lazy with some of those films. Like, Evil mm. Bong 4 is one of the laziest movies I have ever seen. I'm assuming that's 420. Yeah, Evil Bong 4. And not, and not the 420th movie. <laughs> they have uh, Evil Bong 420, Evil Bong 666, uh, Evil Bong 777, and Evil Bong 888. You haven't done all of them, right? I have not. I stopped at 666. Just since it was in my background forever. <laughs> uh, is there anyone else worth talking about? I, I'm trying to remember who... Laura Heron was. I don't remember her, who she played, but she's one of like the first people listed here. I'm assuming everyone else on this list is just someone who got taken off to be killed. Oh, you know yeah. who there? There is one other person worth talking about. Stephen Cox. He was like that really douchey, athletic type where it's like it felt like they were trying to make a point with him and they just didn't. Wade Freeman, All Star quarterback. Yeah, like the the point is like he that he is another person who clearly got away with it. Like he successfully bribed unlike yeah. the one girl who had sex with the teacher and got executed anyway uh again again they don't actually get executed he got spared because he's the star quarterback haha commentary i it, it's like a mi- mixed thing because on one hand i don't think that they spent enough time on that for it to really make an impact on the other hand i definitely don't want to spend more time with that character i uh, he has a much bigger role in the sequel oh boy <laughs> So that's what that's what it is. They were setting him up for the sequel. I swear to God, these two movies were made back to back. No, uh, I thought they were. And Logan I think. Paul and Logan Paul ruined it for everyone. He sure did. <laughs> uh, I, I, he ruined it for poor old Quitten reviews. I remember, Quitten reviews was bummed out when the s- second thing and got canceled. Like got uh, postponed, I should say. But there was a debate on whether it would actually get released at that point. Yeah, no, uh, no one really knew if it was actually getting released, and then they just sort of quietly released it without any fanfare. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 on one hand, I kind of understand why they delayed it. It was just like kind of like sticking your hand into a hornet's nest at that point. I mean, there were like big celebrity. I remember Aaron Paul, Jesse Pinkman's actor, called Logan Paul out. Like there was like big people going after Logan after that. So I, I kind of get it. At the same time, it's like. If you're going to release it in 2018, why not just release it when it was prop supposed to come out? I don't know. Just, but I, 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 I get it. It's just also like, there's no moral concern there. There's backlash concern, I guess. But I guess I'm describing some of the most basic aspects of how people work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, welcome to YouTube. God, <laughs> can we talk about how, like, Susan died? And, like, it barely got talked about because it's it's this woman that we just spent the last decade shitting on. And she stepped down from YouTube and, and, and then just died, like, a year or two later. And we're, we're all kind of like, oh. Yeah. And, I mean, to, to the new operator's credit, they haven't really fixed a lot of the problems Susan's crew introduced but they have not had a massive fiasco in a while either 
I, I do also think with that being said, I, I get why Susan was criticized so heavily when she was running it because it's like, you know, she's the face of it. Of course, the face of it is like, that's the face you have to criticize. At the same time, I think she's also kind of a scapegoat. <laughs> like it was absolutely, it was, there is no way in hell every single decision was just Susan saying, up, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And that's not how that works. No, it was just, it was under her leadership. A lot of bad stuff happened. Right. I, I don't want to like, I don't want to like say something that's going <laughs> to cause any controversy here, but I honestly think people celebrate her death needed to like chill out a little bit. That's, that's a I little uncalled for. I, I, I didn't even see anyone celebrating her death. I, I saw I it on saw Twitter. I, I I see. I didn't even see that because I I all I saw was like, "Welp, she's dead." Yeah, it, and like no one really wanted to say anything else because no one has anything nice to say about her. Right. I th- some of the reaction I saw was uncalled for because it's like I I do kind of see her as like a scapegoat. Like it's just yeah, no, it for it, sure. it, it it wasn't all her. You know, there's there's people mourning right now. Just let them mourn. <laughs> Yeah. I, 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 she, she deserved the criticism, but she's not there anymore. She hasn't been for a while. Yeah. And it's not like YouTube is this great platform now. It's not. It, YouTube is all, like for a very brief, very brief period of time. YouTube was this kind of cool, like, you know, free place for people. Uh, it, that, that changed as early as 2009, 2010. I remember Hulu tube. If you have, look that up, if you ever get the chance, who they were going to merge YouTube and Hulu, like really early into YouTube's run. And that was a big controversy, and that like got a lot of people upset, so they didn't go through with it. But like they're they they're like this website has been completely like the only cool thing about it are the people on it, and it's been that way for a long time. And even then, it's like it's not the most popular people on the planet that are the cool people. <laughs> cool, uh, not the most yeah. popular people on the website. I don't know if it said planet or website. I don't fucking know. I mean, either way, <laughs> let's make a decision about these movies, huh? Yeah. It's about time. I guess you get first vote here. Um, I, I had fun riffing on both of them. I think that Smiley was more fun to riff on. I would sooner show Smiley to someone. Although I, there's so many more movies I'd pick over Smiley if I want to show someone a funny bad movie. That the, it was funny by like, it was good for Hollow Victory standards. Like it was good because it's like, oh, we could have watched something a lot more boring. Planes was fucking horrible to sit through last episode. Yeah. Uh, like there wasn't even like pot- potential to make jokes. It was just boring. Uh, but I do think that the thin and has like, does a lot more ra- like better than smiley did. And I also had a fun time riffing on it. So I'm going to give it to the thin and it's, I don't even think it's that close. I think the thin ends just like even kind of objectively better than smiley. Like they filmed it better. They didn't have Shane Dawson or Tobuscus in there. They, you know, it's, it's not good, but there's ideas that could potentially be something. There was a moment or two that I genuinely liked, although they're, you know, it's, they, they don't save it in any way. Bad movie, but not nearly as bad as Smiley, in my opinion. I, I'm absolutely with you. Like, Smiley, I think, maybe gave me more laughs, but it, it was also, like, the far more painful movie the far more annoying, like, like if I had to list the five most annoying characters from both these movies, I think all five of them would be from Smiley. Like just, yeah. just uh, obnoxious characters, not a fun movie where I like the thinning, probably fewer laughs at that one, but also competently made enough kinda has something to say is not the most painfully dated thing I have ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm voting for the thinning as well on this one. How'd the audience feel? You know what? The audience is with us on this one. It's not the closest, but it is. It's 32 to 68, which is like t- twice as many votes for the thinning. But it, it is the thinning by like a, a third but that, I mean, that's one third for Smiley, two for, thirds for the thinning. We have had more lopsided votes. There is still a contingent who voted for Smiley. So the uh, the thinning wins. The thinning wins. Woo! So do you, you want to know something like incredibly nerdy and specific? Sure. Uh, about this, because I. I sorted the Hollow Victories list by popularity because I was kind of thinking like, 
oh, The Thinning is probably the more popular movie. I'm betting people have seen The Thin more people have seen The Thinning, and that's maybe why Smiley got some votes is just cuz people are voting against the Logan Paul movie that they've seen. It turns out on Letterboxd, uh Smiley is more popular than The Thinning. Not by much though. If you sort the uh, Hollow Victories list by popularity on Letterboxd, uh, Smiley and The Thinning are tied for the smallest gap in a, in a matchup, right? There's only two movies between them, Battle Beyond the Stars and Cool as Ice. So oh. they, they're like 61st and 64th in popularity, I think. And they are tied with... Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, and Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which are first and fourth in popularity. Oh, okay. Well, there you have it. So yeah, they, they are tied with the most popular movie we have ever discussed on this show. Because like, I think that, like, the then, and I, I said it before, but I think it, it, a lot of that really was probably just... People were talking about it, it was relevant, but I think a lot of people were watching reviews and not actually watching the movie. I mean that was me. That Fair. was me. and uh, and that would have been me if we didn't do this pair up because I watched I watched the Quentin Reviews video. I remember that. Yeah. Fair. Um where Smiley I don't think a lot of people were talking about Smiley when it came out. No, but they, I mean certainly there was some buzz for it. Yeah. They are they are like pretty unpopular on the list. Like I said 61st and 64th out of 80 movies. Right. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of Shane Dawson fans watched the, uh, watch Smiley. Alright, uh, next time on Hollow Victories, it's, uh, we got an election coming up. That's scarier oh. than Halloween, I'll tell you that. Um, yeah. so I figured we'd do something maybe a little political, and I figure what better subject than famed liberal documentarian Michael Moore. You know Michael Moore? Oh, yeah. I watched, uh, Bowling, Bowling for, for Columbine. Columbine. I think everybody's seen that. <laughs> well, he, after his first film, Roger and Me, he tried to get into narrative film with a comedy movie, and it kind of flopped, and he went back to making documentaries, uh, which of course earned him the ire of many a conservative. So in 2008, there was a comedy film from David Zucker of the Zucker Abram Zucker comedy trio uh, making fun of Michael Moore. So I thought it'd be fun to do the Michael Moore comedy versus the anti-Michael Moore comedy. <laughs> they even have sort of similar titles. It's Canadian Bacon versus an American Carol. <laughs> All right. This is this is like kind of a weirdly specific matchup. <laughs> like we haven't really done anything like this before. I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. It won't be a popular episode. Right. But it'll be interesting. Yeah, you're right. I can't think of anything we've done that's, like, similar to that. So it's Canadian Bacon and what? Uh, an American Carol. All right. <laughs> uh, we will talk about that next time on Hollow Victories. Do you have anything else? Uh, no. Peace. All right. Until next time, from my co-host, Michael Shackle, I'm Matt Presents. We'll see you in the next one. I said peace out of order. Shit. <laughs>